Hey folks, back with another video. Let's dive into what stories got my attention today. President Vladimir Putin said that he, President Alexander Lukashenko had asked Russia to set up a reserve police force in order to use if the crisis got out of hand. However, President Putin said that he did not see any need for the Russians to intervene as the Russians believe the situation is normalizing. Now, this, of course, confirms the very fact that there is an agreement between Belarus and Russia as far as bringing in troops for help is concerned. Now, President Lukashenko, in my opinion, must spend time on engaging with the protesters and find a peaceful solution rather than seeking international forces to enter the country. Now let's hope the situation in Belarus cools down and the grievances of the protesters are addressed. Moving on. Libya's internationally recognized government imposed a around-the-clock curfew on the capital city for four days as the youth-led anti-corruption protesters protests escalate. Now, the move by the government of National Accord is due in part to counter the spread of virus. Now, Libya, in my opinion, needs peace before anything can be implemented. I would urge the Libyan people to unite and send a strong message both against their domestic government or various governments or factions and also foreign countries that are involved in the Libyan crisis that have escalated the situation for their own interest. Hopefully the Libyan people can first work out to get peace and then reform following that. Moving on, as the USA starts pulling out troops from the Middle East, the Gulf states will probably feel pressure to take care of their own affairs without rel relying on the United States. Now, as you might already know by now, I welcome the United the US withdrawal of troops. And I think that the role of the US in the Middle East should be to facilitate more peace treaties and initiate various talks that are difficult for these nations to have, especially when it comes to the Israel-Palestine situation. I would urge that the United States pressure the Gulf states to deal with their domestic problems themselves and not get the U.S. involved in their domestic problems. Hopefully, this, po this policy that the Trump is pursuing is something that will stay on even after President Trump. Moving on, justice prevails in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, Brendan Tarrant, who killed 51 in a mosque shooting last year, was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, if only the Western government would punish all the terrorists in the same, irrespective of faith, nationality, or color of skin. I would like the Western governments to take this example and signal to any would-be terrorists that they are going to be punished to the maximum extent of the law. That, in my opinion, is the only way we can counter any terrorist attacks in our countries in the West. A strong signal and a clear message to everyone that no one is above the law. And finally, the International Atomic Energy Agency Chief Rafael Grossi has confirmed a deal with the Iran granting inspectors the right to inspect two alleged sites 
one in Tehran and one in Isfahan. Now so far no dates have been announced. Hopefully as long as Iran complies and does not violate the agreement, I can't complain on that front. However, this doesn't mean that the Iranian government is completely off the hook in my eyes. The Iranian government does plenty of bad stuff other than just this particular issue. And I think that we should be clear when it comes to the Iranians that we will counter them where they are wrong. Well, that's it for this video. If you like the video, then hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. And write in the comments your criticisms, your any information that I might have overlooked or any perspective you might want to add. And I'll see you in the next video.